Okay, well, um, I decided to do this thing on Augustine because um, he is probably the best theologian of the Western Church, or you know, which is quite an achievement, um, especially because uh, you know he uh, died in around 400 AD, so was. <clears throat> You know, he's, there have been quite a lot of theologians after him, and uh, uh, and um, you know, and and he is preeminent among Western theologians. So, um, and um, also because um, uh, you know, I, I mean, I when, when I'm sort of trying to find texts to read, one of the th what I sort of basically have two two um, um, well maybe three requirements. The first is that it should be um, good theology. And the second is that it should be clear and, um, if possible, beautiful. And Augustine did write quite beautiful Latin. Um, and the third is that it should um, is that if it's, you know, if it's from the past, it should be different. That um, we should, you know, we should read this and um, learn that things might have been different, that things were different back then. Um, because um, I think that, you know, there is, uh, um, there's far too much of, you know, people taking theologians from the past, like, for example, Luther or Calvin, and uh, trying to use that, you know, use what they wrote directly in order to guide theological decisions now. And I think that's just plain wrong because that was then and this is now. And that's, you know, uh, you know 500 years ago. Okay. So um, Augustine, as, as I've said, is he's, um, um, a theologian and um, was actually a, a, a very, when he want, wanted to be, he was, he could, you know, he was a very technical theologian, he could do grammar and stuff. And uh, one of the things that um, he is concerned with here in this book in, is how do we decide whether a particular sentence is true or not? And uh, so we do that. And so one thing we can, you know, you can just write down a lot of definitions from, you know, all the sources you can find and say, what do, what do you, you know, what, what do you think? Or what does this author think that um, virtue means? Now, virtue is a very interesting word because nowadays, in, you know, particularly in England, Virtue, virtue means um, something very ethical, and it also means something you know, so very connected to notions of purity. Um, and uh, but um, you know, the Latin word is virtus, and it was actually used of a you you know of that, but, but it was used in, ter in terms of a, a whole lot of other. Um, positively and you know positively evaluated characteristics so for example it could be manulous manliness um it could be bravery or power i mean that's true bravery and power are two different things the ability to perform heroic deeds is a fairly martial you know martial attribute um and it could mean capability or proficiency, or what we call virtue, and it could mean you know all, all of these sorts of things. So it's a very very broad um, um, uh, you know it's it's a very broad concept, um, and you do find it you know now and again in Augustine's work, and particularly in these sorts of works, um, and. Um, where Augustine, um, you know, the ability, you know, the the uh, the reason why a concept like that is sort of interesting to read Augustine with, is that Augustine is, 
very, um, you know, he, he does think that um, people are capable of doing good things, but he also thought that people were capable of doing very bad things. And that there is, you know, that the two things are intertwined with each other in a way that makes it very difficult to separate. Um, and so that, um, and, you know, you look down here and you see, you know, a rather um, um, ambivalent um, uh, you know, set of words like manuals or bravery of power and the ability to perform heroic deeds, capability, and, you know, and the, you know, the, uh, and, and a lot of the stuff that was written in the Middle Ages was actually very equivocal about concepts like bravery. Um, so, um, uh, and translating virtue into English from Latin is surprisingly difficult because, you know, here's a very practical reason. English has a huge vocabulary. Part of it, that is because English has, um, you know, a lot of vocabulary which came from Latin, but also came from a lot of vocabulary which came from the, um, um, you know, from the um, Celtic languages. Um, and um, so that you, you've got this, um, you know, very large room for maneuver. And you, this, you know, this English is capable of a great deal of nuance, for example, which you, which, has to be done in other ways in languages like Latin. I mean, Latin has a very, very small vocabulary. Uh, and, uh, and so there's a bit of a mismatch, and some English words would sometimes mean virtus in Latin, but sometimes they wouldn't. Um, and um, and um, And and I mean, if you're looking back to the Middle Ages, you get an awful lot of emphasis on, um, you know, and sort of martial culture and jousts and tournaments and so on. And that that was a culture which was actually, you know, treated very equivocally in the Middle Ages. Because, you know, a lot of people were um, seriously involved with it, but uh, uh, but a, a lot of people were, you know, quite uh, not not exactly positive about. Um, these, these, these virtues. Um, now, English has um, a much larger vocabulary than that, as I said. It also has a much larger vocabulary than, for example, German. I mean, English is a much larger language than German. And, uh, and uh, there was a corresponding problem with Latin in the ancient world, because in the ancient world, Latin was had really quite a small vocabulary. And it wasn't, um, you know, uh, and it wasn't a sort of high polluted language. Um, but the large and subtle language in the ancient world was Greek. And so there seemed to be uh, a sort of snobbery against Latin, or the Romans would conversely get quite annoyed with the Greeks because of the sort of Greek and cultured and so on. Um, and, you know, and, and, uh, um, and, um, you know, and, 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 and Latin culture in the Middle Ages and earlier was very, very martial. Certainly earlier on, certainly in the, in the times when Augustine was writing. Um, and, um, uh, and Augustine was a Latin speaker, and he probably knew, as I said, a bit of Greek, but was not, not proficient in it. Um, he also um, came from North Africa, um, and he came about a third of the way along from the left. And uh, he also came, and there was, as still is, uh, you know, and the North Africans, or many of them at any rate, had their own languages. I mean, some of them spoke, you know, I mean, you know, Augustine's people spoke, spoke Latin. He seems to have known, you know, the uh, North African languages very poorly. And, and, um, and, the, um, and this language is usually called Berber, 
though it's a rather insulting name. It wasn't the name, that, you know, one of the many names which the local inhabitants called it, because it was sort of supposed to be, you know, ba ba ba. It was sort of, uh, you know, that, that uh, it was something that, you know, uh, snobs thought that the native speakers were couldn't pre speak correctly. Uh, and Augustine doesn't seem to have known Berber very much, if at all. Um, so that that that's that's the background to this. Um, we have, um, if we go to the book, um, what I want to read are the um, sort of the top two. Well, starting from the bottom, page one forty-two, top two paragraphs of one forty-three, and then see where we can. Uh, yeah. Um, can I just ask, when you said that um, Greeks are a more larger, more subtle language than Latin, does that imply we've lost something then in translating theological terms and concepts from Greek into Latin? Um, well, generally speaking, yes. I mean, it would it would yeah. it would, it would depend helpful. on who the translator was, because if you yes. Read, I mean, if if you have a very good translator, and you know, a lot of them were very good, then they could work out around the difficulties. Right. I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know, and Augustine, as we I hope here, is capable of a great deal of subtlety, even though he was working in a language with a small vocabulary. Right. No, that, that's really helpful. I didn't realize that. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, shall we start? Um, if somebody wants to volunteer to start reading the paragraph starting on the big bottom of page 142. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, paragraphs the, accordingly. Accordingly. Yeah. Who to is permitted to speak. Okay. Accordingly, words don't have even the minimal function of indicating the speaker's minds since it's uncertain whether he knows the truth of what he says. Moreover, in the case of liars and deceivers, it's easy to understand that their minds are not only not revealed, but are even concealed by their words. I don't by any means doubt, of course, that the words of those who tell the truth attempt to make the speaker's mind evident and somehow declare it. They would accomplish this, everyone agrees, the liars were not permitted to speak. Yeah. Okay, what do we think about this? Uh, no, uh, um, because there are several actions here. Firstly, um, you know, the um, he's saying that most people, when they speak, um, uh, whether we know it's uncertain when we speak, whether we know the truth of it or not. And he says this holds for everybody. What do we think about that? Can you remind us which page you're on? I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've not... Oh, it's uh, it. top of page 143. Ah, thank you. Oh, hang on, I've got page 143. Oh. It's, it's, uh, did you get it in the chat? Oh, no, I didn't, sorry. It's in the oh. chat. Ah, uh, oh, sorry. Um, I'm on my tablet, so I'm not so... Oh, here we are. Um, page 142. And then yep. um, <laughs> mind being concealed by their words. Yeah. Interesting. But the truth teller. But well, they still aren't really necessarily going to know the truth because it depends what knowledge they've got yes, to be knowing yes, it yes. and uh the older they get um they could actually have sort of not quite fixed things properly yes 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 and they might have think, begun to think oops speaking the truth is all very boring let's try something mm -hmm. else yes um I mean, there is um, there there are quite a number of sort of modern philosophers who um, 
if you want to name the, the name to have is don't don't try is Donald Davidson, is to say that uh, actually you couldn't have such a situation because uh, when you interpret somebody's you know what somebody says, then what what we do is we uh, try and make things as consistent as possible. So that, you know, and everybody speaks languages you know words which are somewhat ambiguous, and you try to. Um, tweak their meaning so that as many of them become jointly true as possible, because otherwise communication would be in, would would just not work. So um, this is um, not what Augustine says, um, and uh, and he said, and you know, and you know, ending that. Uh, you know, I don't by any means doubt that the words of those who tell the truth are print to make the speaker's mind evident and somehow declare it. If you're uh, uh, complimenting somebody, say, when they're saying, and do you like my new hat? Yes. Well, you're going to say, oh, yes, or the colour is nice, but you may actually be thinking that it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we certainly do tell white lies. I yeah, think. I think we do. Yeah, quite often. Yeah. I'm suggesting here that, that the liar and the deceiver actually is deceiving themselves. Yeah, it? yes, I, I think yeah. there is there is that as well that we have actually, you know, we don't know whether the things we say are true or not. And so that. that Right, even if you're even if you're speaking, you think to be absolutely true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there is a sort of, you know, you know, but the words of those who tell the truth attempt to make the speaker's mind evident somehow to play it. There is a kind of sense of, you know, you still fail. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you yeah. attempt it, but yeah. you still fail. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And there are lots of people who you know who are who. Um, really don't like telling something to somebody who wouldn't like what you're saying. So there's a lot of tweaking of the truth goes on there. Mm. And even, and even, yes, well, and even, um, you know, liars weren't attempted, weren't permitted to speak. And, yes, <laughs> it's yes, a, yes. Blaming, blaming liars for, for one, other liars for one's own lies. Really. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, yes, okay. yes. I mean, I, th I think that, you know, uh, they would have come to say everything. Everyone is agreed with lies. We're not permitted to speak, but it's just sort of, <laughs> you know, it, it's he is saying that as if as if this was obviously wrong. You know, it comes into play if we're uh, sort of um, speaking matters of faith, doesn't it? Really. Um, I think what I find interesting is that all the emphasis is on the speaker and nothing is on the listener. And to speak the truth, you need to be in a context where it's okay to speak the truth. Um, you know, imagine that you're living in Russia right now and you don't agree with what's going on. Mm. Um, can yeah. you blame anyone for lying? Yeah. Yes. And, um, um, and, and, and Augustine does, you know, I mean, he is very much in, in this, you know, certainly in, the, in these works, very much saying that the onus is on the speaker mm. to come out mm. with the truth. Um, and, um, you know, and I think it, you know, you could very well argue that many, um, you know, that, 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 that it's, uh, you know, um, conversations arise out of a, you know, a uh, um, some sort of cooperation between speaker and hearer, and that the you know speaker hearers are always you know making <clears throat> you know vis visible or invisible signs or yeah. sounds, and, mm. um, and that uh, um, and, and you know and that that does influence the speaker quite a lot. So um, so it's not really as. Um, um, you know, not, 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 um, it's a bit one sided, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, I mean, it's a bit tangential, 
Holly and I went to a demonstration on Saturday for Hong Kong, and the people there were speaking very powerfully against the you know, Chinese Communist Party. Oh, but in order to do that, they wore you had to wear masks, masks and helmets, you know, and covered in yeah. the identity. And some spoke behind the screen yeah. rather than you know. Mm. And it's it in a sense it's, it's how the, the speaker there was revealing, uh, hiding their identity mm. in, yeah, in order to be able to, to speak and communicate. Mm -hmm. So so their truth was coming out. Not it was coming out of themselves, but not as themselves. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's awfully sad. Yeah, it's, it's a, I mean, it's just yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess, if there's that kind of, there's that kind of special layer that blocks out the fear, yeah. you know, um, blocks it out. Mm. Enough, at least. Yeah. I mean, that's and that's what we get by by concealing our identity. The fear that comes with being honest about our situation or ourselves. Yes. 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 And you know, um, and um, you know, and 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 uh, the, you know, in cultures vary, and some of them are, um, you know, emphasize more the you know honesty of. What people say and others mm. um, uh, emphasize consensus and agreement, right. um, mm. which I suppose you know, Chinese are very much mm. consensus based culture. Mm. So. Not that's the int other interesting side of this, isn't it? Do we value the truth anymore? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Justine obviously does, but you know, do we do we want to hear the truth? Yeah. Mm. What, what is Augustine really saying is the truth here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah, well, he is certainly saying the truth. Is he saying that there is you know an absolute truth and that you can you, you can somehow or other know it? Or is he saying that Everything is relative and true. No, he's not saying everything is relative, but he was a school teacher. I mean, that was his, you know, that was his day job until he became mm. a famous theologian. Mm. Uh, and um, I mean, you can see that in here, you know, mm. he is, um, you know, trying to um, build bridges with the audience. And, uh, um, and presumably, if he fell in, as I was reading in the introduction, um, with the academicians, yeah. and they're very much asking people to question what they hear, yeah, and whether yeah. you really, almost anything was quite true, or whether it was just as near as you could get to the truth, it could be yeah. sort of believable. Yeah, yeah. I forget the words he uses. Yeah, yes, and there was a, you know, certainly in, you know, Socrates, you know, as time and you know going on to Augustine, there was an awful lot of argument about these these things about you know about whether whether truth is possible and that so that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, and whether our whether our senses deceive us. Anyway, does someone want want to do the say the next paragraph? Such part you know such part of it as you have. Yeah, check the phone first. Someone <laughs> <laughs> can take over. <laughs> Happy. We have often had the experience in ourselves and in other people of words being uttered that don't correspond to the things thought about. I see that this can happen in two ways. A. When a speech that has been committed to memory and often run through pours out of the mouth of someone thinking about other things, speaking in absence to other things in the game, yes. it doesn't do. <laughs> when, by a slip of tongue, when by a slip of tongue some words rush out in place of others against our will, here two signs are heard that are about the things we have in mind. Liars also think of the things they say, so that although we don't, don't know whether they're speaking the truth, we know that they have in mind what they're saying, which will neither A nor B occur. If anyone contends that A and B occur only occasionally, 
but is apparent when they occur and make no objection, for they are often unnoticed and they have often have often deceived me in hearing. Mm. Yes. Mm. I always make I always sing the old ones. Yes. Mm. Well, really not much has changed between Augustine's time and our own, really. Yeah. Um, notice also that when he's talk, he say that you know, uh, if you have you, people committed speeches to memory before com mm. saying them. Mm. So, and that's, you know, really a, um, you know, and that sort of shows a culture in which writing was expensive. Mm -hmm. That, uh, you know, if you were going to give a speech, then you, you know, wrote it or you made it up and then you memorized it. Mm -hmm. Um So, you know, so it's, you know, when it, when, when a speech that has been committed to memory and often run through was out of the mouth, so no mention of writing there. No. Hmm. Well, we do sort of speak of people just just giving the propaganda or the sales plug, don't we? Yes. Whether they think it or not, it's just what they rather being told to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Implies too in A that when when they were singing a hymn at the time that they were from memory as well. So mm. yeah. I remember I, once somebody coming into um an Anglican church and sort of saying, well, why do you still look at your liturgy books when you do it every week? You should know it by now. And that's Really, really interesting because you have people go to church week after week, year after year, and they still look at the stuff in front of them, even though it's exactly the same as it's always been. Mm. So I guess we're we're not really a, a committing to memory culture, are we? Um, interesting. I, I once visited a, an Anglican church because I did an Anglican course. I knew the liturgy off by heart. I've said it so many times, and uh, so I didn't pick up the book. Mm. Person next to me absolutely insisted that that. Oh no. She just kept pushing this book in front of me. I said, Master, I don't, there you are, you have to have it. She said, play with the rules. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's really interesting. I mean, you know, I mean, that, yeah, sure. I mean, things come out by mistake and we make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the B is, is more serious, isn't it? It's, yes. It's, it's when when we say the things that we didn't intend to say that we, we should have thought about, you know. And, and you put that in the kick yourself. Yes, yes. It's probably oh, yeah, some things that are just a bit insensitive, you know. Maybe they're the right things to say, but the person you're saying it to just isn't in that situation where they can receive what you say. Yeah. Yeah. I guess B is also the Freudian flip, and it's so mm. easy to say what you're really thinking when you're trying desperately not to mm. reveal that. And again, it's reassuring to know that's always been the case. Not, it's not just a recent thing. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. But they're, they're genuine mistakes, but you know, and, and you, you, so with good intention, you can do A and B. Oh, without that bad intention, at least you can do A and B. But they're saying that actually there are situations when neither A or nor B occurs, and that, that's yes, that's out of some deceitful intent. Yeah. Yes, or de deceitful or careless, just, careless yes. or just uh, you know absent-minded. Mm. And the the last paragraph sentence of that paragraph is is, mag is magnificent. Hmm. What's the next paragraph? No, no, the end of the, the last sentence in oh, that paragraph. Yeah. Hmm. 
Well, I don't know how we're supposed to tell if, if someone's saying the right words but not thinking about them. Hmm. I don't know how we, how we expect us to be able to tell that anyway. Um, lack of, could it be the lack of belief behind them? Hmm. Yes. Well, yes, you know, um, well, I, I think it's that, you know, A and B are, Augustine is saying that A and B do occur. Yes. And then, oh, uh, you know, and then you've got somebody possibly say, oh, no, surely not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're we we're, 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 we're you know we're good Christians, surely not. <laughs> and uh, you know, Augustine says he makes no objection because <laughs> uh, it would uh, uh, it would only stir up trouble. Though they are often unnoticed, and they have often deceived me on hearing them. So he's saying that you know, in his, my case, his I've been I've in been his deceived. Experience, he thinks they have to certainly do have happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, then people think about, yeah. yeah. Mm. We deceive ourselves. Yeah. Okay, well, I, shall I read out the next mm. paragraph? Mm. Um, there is another class in addition to these, one that is widespread and the source of countless disagreements and quarrels. When the speaker does signify the self-same things he's thinking about, but for the most part only to himself and to certain others, Whereas he doesn't signify the same thing to the person to whom he's speaking and again to several other persons. So this is at least the, you know, the person saying different things to different people. Yes, oh, indeed. I understand that. <laughs> yes, it's the gossiping. It's the saying things behind somebody's back. Yes. You never say yes. to them there, or possibly not to other people, but just to some others. Amen. So, you know, he doesn't signify the same thing to the person to whom he's speaking and to lots of other people. So, you know, he obviously has a a story for each person. And he goes on to explain it, and it sounds as if it's the fact that different people hear the same words as meaning different things, which does make sense. Because you can imagine a politician saying something and people taking it two completely different ways. Yeah. Depending on what either they're expecting the person to say or what they're wanting them to say. Um and I guess some people deliberately speak like that as well. So people, yeah. so different members of the audience can hear what they want to hear and what they're saying, they deliberately make it ambiguous. Yes. Yes. And I guess to yeah. a certain extent, that's what we do in, in some of our preaching. If those of us who preach, we, 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 want, we want there to be a breadth in what's heard so people don't only have to have one view of things to understand what we're talking about. So we... We sort of deliberately speak in a way that can be engaged with by different people coming from different theological places, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you, 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 yeah, and the sermon might include storytelling, it might include, you know, some theological, doctrinal, you know, yes, yeah. Uh, and yeah, you might, uh, Use uh, metaphors. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You might, you know, and you might you use jokes that are perfectly okay, but not very good for certain sorts of audience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jokes are the worst. Yeah. And yes. Laughs, you know, very unpredictable. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that's I mean, all putting the very nicest gloss on what he's saying there, really. Yeah. It's not the sort of um, saying nasty things about people to somebody else. 
Mm. Which you most certainly wouldn't. No. Well, I actually remember being in a corporate office where this kind of thing would go on, where one person would say one thing to you and then they start, mm. say a slightly different version to somebody yeah. else. And, and then mm. and when the story would evolve, that can be lost. Um, and you wouldn't know, you wouldn't yeah, know gotcha. what was right and what was wrong or whether it was relevant at all. Yeah. That was very common. Yeah. Anyway, shall we move on to the next paragraph? Mm. 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 Yeah. So, mm -hmm. school has which is 143. Uh, 143 on the top okay. paragraph of, you know, the end of 143, the top of 144. Can I do that one? Yeah. For example, that someone say in our hearing, man is surpassed in virtue by some brute animal. He immediately can't bear this. And with great vehemence, we refute it as false and harmful. Yet perhaps he's calling physical strength virtue, and enunciating what he thinks about, what he was thinking about with this name. He would be neither lying nor in error about these things. Nor is he reading off words committed to memory, while turning something else over in his mind. Nor does he utter by a slip of the tongue for something other than what he wanted. Instead, he's merely calling the thing he's thinking about by another name than we do. You should at once agree with him about it if we could, if we could look into his thinking, which he wasn't yet able to disclose to us by the words he'd already uttered in expressing his view. Mm. Oh. Yeah, so that's a lot of how a lot of misunderstanding takes place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At uh, all kinds of levels. Yeah. I don't. I, 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 no, but in a lot of um, the Spanish speakers, we often talk about compromise. So this is the compromise or is oh. is um, agreement. Yeah. But they, they then say, oh, well, we have a compromise. Mm -hmm. Meaning meaning commitment agreement. Yeah. It's an ugly struggle to hear. Oh. Can you guys hear everything okay? It's a bit quiet. Can just uh... Yeah, I can't so quite hear can, We can kind of turn the mic. Sorry, that might be loud. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, no, no. Kind of turn the mic as we yeah as we go. No, I, okay. It's just an example of of people using a <laughs> word you know in, uh, which means one thing, which they're intending to mean one thing, but actually when you hear it, so a Spanish speaker may say may say I, I've made a compromise. Whereas they were actually translating compromiso, which is agreement or whatever. So, wow. so yeah, they intend to say I make an agreement, but actually they say I make a compromise, um, which is very different. Mm. Mm. Maybe someone wants to speak, they can turn the mic to themselves, perhaps. Yeah. No, I don't know why that, that microphone yeah. is supposed to be really good. It must be other setting. Yeah, all sorts of guys and so on. Um, okay, what's what your time going? You've got 10 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, well, shall we do the um, uh, next paragraph and then. I'll read yeah. the second yeah. time. <laughs> yes, I forget now. Um, <clears throat> so they say that definitions can remedy this kind of error. So that in this case, if the speaker were to define what virtue is, he would make it plain, they say, 
that the dispute is over the word and not the thing. Now I might grant this to be so, yet how many people can be found who are good at definitions? In any event, there are many arguments against the system of definitions, but it isn't opportune to discuss them here, nor do I altogether approve them. I always thought definitions were pretty fundamental because if you can't actually agree on what you're talking about, then how can you have a conversation? I, I'm staggered that he's he's so laid back about that. <laughs> many people can be found who are good at how many people are found who can be good at definitions. That's to me that's part of large part of the problem that we all go around talking about stuff, but no one ever pins us down yeah, yeah. to a common a common understanding of what we're talking about. Um, yeah. Is a dictionary definition. I mean, dictionary defines what a word means, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have liked Johnson, would he? <laughs> <laughs> What's his objection to definitions, um, Graham? Well, firstly, um, 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 only intelligent people can understand them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, and uh, and um, uh, there's there's a footnote which says that you know uh, that philosophers at that time had a you know a, a big a lot of differences about whether definitions were the same thing. Um, um, uh, one, one, I think one of the um, uh, you know, main point here, and it's a sort of empirical point, is that you don't actually see people coming out with definitions very frequently at all. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, and, um, uh, and, uh, um, and, um, you know, and, 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 and also, um, you know, context is very important, and uh, um, you know, uh, um, you know, and X can be a definition of something in one context and fail to be a definition of it in another context. So it's. Um, and you've already said to us that virtue, uh, in the Latin, uh, has has a number of different meanings. Yes, uh, and uh, so. Um, yeah, and uh, um, so um, so you know it really is quite difficult, um, and um, um, and uh, words change their definitions over time. Yes, yeah. I guess you could say populism is 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 whole is is based upon. A, a lack of definition because slogans almost by um by the nature aren't about definitions they're just about words which are thrown around and mean whatever people want them to mean um and they have association based on the aim right yes populism you kind of associate with yes right wingers don't yeah. them, but it doesn't necessarily mean mm. one of any political persuasion yeah. mm. But like I mean, like the rhetoric about Im immigration, immigration has an association, as you say, Harley. But if you define it, then you have to think about the different types of immigrants, and 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 no one ever does that. It's just them, with all the associations that they have for the populace and their followers. Um, and it's often said that the, the, that there's a real lack of definition in that sort of. Yeah. Speak and, and, and not just on that issue. Mm. That's, this is really interesting, actually. Mm. It's, and we it's so up to date, say, really. We sometimes say words are slippery. Just to mm. say yes. that, that we yes. are really quite, you know, it's really hard to know because people are going to have different views about what this one means. Mm. Uh, yeah. oh, sorry, sorry, No, 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 I was just going to say, no, it's, it's not actually relevant, but... <laughs> <laughs> we really like it. Oh, <laughs> no, no.
no, 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 it's not. That. You're saying, go on. I mean, sure. sometimes I, sometimes I, uh, it's it's not relevant to the conversation at all. But yeah, I mean, there's times when I, you know, use a particular word wrongly, you know, because it sounds like it will mean something. Yeah. But it means something else, in it? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm both, I, I can see both sides of this. I think we have to confront language, don't we? because if we yeah. don't then things don't change yeah. you know and going back to um peter's thing about immigration you know it's it's slipped into the culture um to say illegal immigrant mm. well, there is no such thing yeah. it's not illegal to be immigrant it's not illegal to be a person mm. you know and it was actually quite telling last week when Mari black from the smp challenged that on the question time because you could see the the politician who'd uttered it suddenly going oh my goodness you know i've I've realized what what i've slipped into mm -hmm. um so you have to confront language but on the other hand language evolves as well yeah. and changes yeah and the, the one uh, the story that i always think of is i used to run um environmental courses for kids who didn't spend much time in the countryside and used to take them on walks through the countryside and i remember always remember this young lad next to me who came into a field where there were cows and this is this is a few years ago, so you have to tune into the colloquialisms of the time. But he, he just looked at the cows and pointed at one. And he said, that's a well-sick cow. <laughs> a well-sick cow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I knew what he meant. Of course I did. And we all know. But it was just, if you disentangle the language out of context, it makes no sense. Um so I, I and i like that i think language should change it should it should evolve each generation should should you know look at the reclamation of the word queer um mm -hmm. you know that that's a vital thing to have done um i think that's important but then if you over define then you can't do that but then if you don't define you can't either you've got to find both you've got to do both i'm i'm intrigued by what augustine is saying here because i don't really know um because <laughs> he's not defined it really <laughs> okay well, shall we then next speaker is uh i pass over the fact that there are many things we don't hear clearly and we argue forcefully at great length about them as if they were things we heard for example, you were saying recently, Adeodatus, that although I had asserted that mercy is signified by a certain Punic word, you had heard from those more familiar with this language that it signifies piety. Well, I objected to this, insisting that you completely forgot what you were told, because it seemed to me that you had said faith rather than piety, though you were sitting right next to me and these two names don't at all trick the ear by any similarity in sound. Yet for a long time, I thought you didn't know what was said to you, whereas it was I who didn't know what you had said. <laughs> if I had heard you clearly, it would never have seemed absurd to me that piety and mercy are named by a single Punic word. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> It can be quite amusing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. He did enjoy life's ambiguities. I think. Yeah. Presumably, if we knew Latin, this would make even more sense because faith doesn't sound anything like piety. But presumably, in Latin, the two words do sound a bit more like. Is that the case? Does anybody know? Uh, it would be fides and um, pietas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that does sound. Yeah, no, I can see that. Yeah, I was, I was just intrigued uh, because in English it's not very yes. obvious. And mercy is misericordia, um, which yeah. sounds nothing like the other two. <laughs> no. <laughs> hmm. oh. That's going back to what we were talking about earlier, though, isn't it? That's about the listener. Mm -hmm. And now he is putting the listener in the forefront. Mm -hmm. And the listener does have a responsibility. Yes. 
Um, and in an argument, it is always easy to assume what the other person has said because mm -hmm. your brain's going ahead and predicting, so you're ready with your counter-argument. Mm -hmm. I remember once having an argument with my brother that carried on for far too long because I'd agreed with him about halfway through it and he hadn't heard me. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, yesterday, we, we were in a meeting and you made a very lucid point and then turned to me and said, isn't that is that right or something? Yeah, well, I said, and, what do you think? What yeah. do you think? And I hadn't been listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry, I embarrassed you. I didn't know I was embarrassed. I thought you would. I thought you would. Say, mm, something yes, really so bad. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, but not at all. I mean, just yeah. silence. Yeah. <laughs> <Stuttering>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should have done the very wise thing, Vaughan, and said, "Well, what do you think?" <laughs> we'll be testing you for almost all sorts of outrageous things and then turn <laughs> you agree with us and if you were listening <laughs> I mean I'm really struck I, I must confess when I heard when it was announced we were going to be looking at Augustine I thought oh no because the last time I read Augustine was at university but there's actually stuff here that that, that is is Sounds so modern and relevant. I'm mm. really very, very. Mm. Um, so thank you, Graham, for 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 introducing us to him. Yeah, or reintroducing yeah. us to him. Yes, yeah. he is a, a wonderful writer. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, does somebody want to round things off by reading out the next paragraph? Yes. Uh, so which is the next paragraph? I've, I've... The, these things often happen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> These things often happen. Let's pass over them, as I said, so that I not so that I not seem to be stirring up quibbles against words because of the carelessness of hearing or even of people's deafness. <laughs> the cases we listed above are more bothersome, where we can't know the thoughts of the speakers, though we speak the same language and the words are Latin and are clearly heard. Can <laughs> we go on to the next one? Yeah. yeah. See here. I now give in and concede that when words are heard by someone who knows them, they can know that the speaker had been thinking about the things they signify. Yet does, yet does he for this reason also learn whether the speaker has stated truths, which is the question at hand. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Well, gosh. And we certainly can't know the thoughts of the speakers, even though we do speak the same language. That's an interesting point, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's kind of messy, isn't it? Mm. Communication. Communication, yes, it's yeah. certainly is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. I mean, in a sense, it's important in, in meetings or group discussions or whatever, just to check that the letters off and got the same understanding rather than just plowing along. And well, you, mm. There's certainly that, and there is this other thing that arises. Uh, a per we can say, or a, a person can say, oh, I know what he's thinking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And probably it's quite a good thing. I mean, keeping this little element of mystery and more to discover about a person mm. might be a mm. good thing. Yes. Instead mm. of mm. thinking you just know how yes. they're going to react. To yes. 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 Isn't, isn't it more interesting not to know whether we all think the same thing about something or understand the word in the same way, but instead to discover what the differences are between us mm. and mm. to accept them. Yes. Every one of us is different and we're all going to bring different heritage to whatever we're talking about. Mm. And I guess the same words, even though they, even though the word may have a, a clear definition, They'll mean different things to different people, have different connotations to different people, different associations to different people. 
That's it, yeah. Um, One of the phenomena I'm really, really interested in is when you meet, make a decision in an organization like this one, for example, and then mm. you appear to have made an understanding in a meeting about what, what the next step is. And then people go back immediately to on the assumption that the status quo actually continues. And if you've decided to change the status quo, actually you haven't because people just carry on the routine mm -hmm. that they, they always did. And, none of the things, and that is just it's not here. I mean, this is common phenomena in all organizations. Mm -hmm. Go back to your desk mm -hmm. and you just do what you always did before, even though you've made a decision yeah. not to do that. <laughs> um, and why is that? Is it because the routine is and the familiar is just so so comfortable, yeah. or is it because you actually haven't really heard the decision that was made, yeah. or actually bought into that yeah. decision? You know? Yeah. I mean, it's all. Wow. I, I mean, you know, it's, it's sort of that you know, people, someone has two pieces of information in their head. Mm. One of them is you know the new state of affairs. Which you know they may have understood perfectly clearly, and they may be you know have nothing against it. And the other is you know some facts about how the, how the routine was, which they may also uh, believe is perfectly true. And you know they they they, they don't actually see that there's a contradiction between the two. Yeah. And you know and and you know change in organizations is. Is very very slow, yeah, because of things like this. Mm. 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 <coughs> That's true. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. 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 Yeah.